Hey, what's up? Ron here. Today, Painting Masters is finally back after a long, long break. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to look at art by uh, David A. Parfit, an incredible landscape painter. Now, it's always fun for me to encounter. He's British, uh, a member of the Royal Institute of Painters in Watercolor, and it's always fun for me to encounter artists who weren't traditionally trained and who perhaps discovered their... Um, the, the possibility of making art a career that if you've been painting or drawing ever since you were young, but you kind of get started later. And David is one of those stories. So very encouraging for many people. Probably his art is fantastic. So beautiful. It really captivates me and I will start with my favorite painting. So without further ado, let's actually uh, get started looking at his paintings. So this is really fun to be once again doing these. And I will start, as I mentioned, with my favorite. Uh, this one, and I believe I have their names. So this one's called Vintage Walk. I did save some of the names so I can show you the sizes as well. So 38 by 43 centimeters, which makes sense. There's actually quite a lot of details crammed into this one. Um, a couple of things I love just... <laughs> everything but um, it all works together it's truly a masterpiece if you look at the overall balance to me the sky against the ground they both have a lot of different characteristics that, that there are details in them but they work in perfect balance so the sky is a little of course more blended more smooth while the ground and bottom has a lot of sharp edges and a lot of stronger contrast right now if you look from top to bottom the colors are top notch this is one of the paintings that really gave me motivation to start improving my my colors as well the the blues in the background it's just magical and the fields and crops that are a little yellow a little green a little and you can tell few um, primary colors perhaps were used to mix those it all works really well in harmony the sky the subtle nature of the clouds starting from a little bit of gray or maybe warm and going a little cooler down below maybe to suggest the farther clouds even the angle at which the paper was at to make the clouds flow it's just genius and the details and the hinting of you know all of these highlights at the far back really feels like a city or village or houses or you know just spectacular really this is probably my all-time favorite we can end the video here no but there's much more to see but this is how i discovered him on twitter by the way uh you do want to make sure to follow him which i forget to mention later but be sure to follow him uh, we'll put links in the description box let's look at another one so what really stood out for me here and i don't remember if i have the name no it's just that mood that atmosphere like we're in the middle of a uh wet kind of cool day but it's kind of evening maybe there's even a bit of a sun showing uh and the light on the water maybe he's on a bridge if that's a water canal or something like that the sense of place <coughs> is just spectacular now let me address uh, or direct your attention rather to something so subtle and so beautiful here actually two things one is the clouds top parts of the clouds are a little cooler while the bottom parts are a little warmer you get that little bit of a peachy, very muted, peachy, orangey kind of color down here. And that really hints that this, the sun is low and it hits the bottoms of the clouds, especially you can see it here too. It's just fantastic, really. Now, another subtle thing I absolutely like is this, the texture on the water here. If it's water again, it's so gentle. I don't even need to know for certain what things are here because I get the feeling of the, the scene and it, it, it really hits the feels. It's so good. I love that green. This is usually a green I try and avoid. It looks so good. It's so in the context. Uh, a lot of beautiful um, secondary colors as well in the background there. A lot of purples and a bit of blues here. Oranges, of course, all of the greens. The field, everything is done masterfully. No brush mark is excessive. Everything is right in the right spot. Just beautiful. Here's another one. So this is a genre of paintings of his that I really, really like. Of showing these maybe willow trees or stuff like that. That have all these crazy, wacky branches. Um, what I like the most about these is not only their shape, but how they interact with the light in the scene. So what you'll see is a bit of a soft edge around this area right here that's just pure genius because it gives a feeling that we're looking at it at, at these trees in a wet day right um the even the camera lens or our eyes are wet from some rain and then the sun comes out and it's just a beautiful moment the combination of highlights here and in random places is genius i'm not sure if he used um masking tape 
masking fluid or just negative painting, but it's just genius. Of course, some of these areas are, most of them probably are negative painted. I just wonder in these shadows, did he kind of pick up, put a lot of pieces of tape or something like that and pick them up? Not sure. To me, it looks very organic and like painted with uh, by leaving those highlights. Just beautiful. And then the colors as well. It's just this yellow here sings. Uh, in the context of this scene, it looks so bright. The sunlight looks so bright, almost blinding. Just genius. Um, another two pieces that he said he recreated 12 months after painting the originals. Just wow. Uh, so bottom one, all the things I said about that first one, the vintage walk painting, that's one of my favorites. I believe it was vintage walk, right? Top one is just stands out to me. It's a standout one because of those oranges. I love it so much. The combination of oranges in the foreground, blues in the background, these mountains that are hinted at, it's just genius. This encourages me so much to, to now go and try doing this. <coughs> really sp spectacular work. The greens are very muted. Um, I don't know, the, these touches of strong blues here, ult ultramarine looks like. Just genius, genius, and you don't have to spell it out for the viewer. This is enough for me to see whatever I need here. On the verge of abstract, but still quite representational. Look at all these, you know, roads and bridges and connections between um, between different crops and fields and, and power lines even here, maybe. Just genius, genius. Here's another abstract one. I wanted to show you a few. He showed a few uh, sketches from his sketchbook on his Twitter that, again, you want to sh follow for sure. Um, just beautiful. Those same qualities that attract me to the more detailed, maybe more careful, larger studio works are present here. And actually, this teaches a lot. Because what I learned from this is, because it's faster and maybe more raw, I personally get to learn more from this because I see the technique more. You know, the the let's say the more... Uh, finesse or finish the painting has, maybe it can obstruct some of the techniques to achieve that. That's the magic. You don't see the technique. But for this, I can actually see it and I can appreciate it so much. So uh, just the, the overall approach, the wetness of the washes, the sharp versus soft edges, all of these brush marks with like the random twigs and branches we saw earlier. Just genius. Another one. So this was, I believe, another take on the vintage walk uh, revisited painting. So very similar to the first one. Obviously, I love them both so much. Uh, so yeah, and look at these clouds in the, the distance. Like he's not afraid of doing these very, very thin, pale washes, either wet and wet or even wet on dry. I'm, I'm not sure, I can't say for sure, but just fantastic. Look at the light coming through the skies. Really a divine look, love it. Let's see another one. Let's look at what we have here. Come on, scroll. <laughs> uh, oh, I love this orientation here. And I believe this was the hedge grow. Uh, 13 by 28 centimeters. Just, it's nice to give the size for reference. Um, it's pretty small, actually. Uh, it looks, look, looks bigger because it's so detailed. All the things I love. Again, even in these abstract compositions, there is so much magic and there is so much skill required to build something like that when i when, when my eyes travel on the, on the painting they kind of go right to left left to right and moving jumping between those tree branches it's all there like the unique shapes every one of those has unique shapes unique colors some of them are a little orange some of them are a little turquoise some of them are a little gray blue it's all there it's so beautiful and then the way the the bushes underneath it are kind of framing it and then the way the all of the branches and the round branches here, like this is genius. Look at these, um, kind of frames the sky and, and leads to interesting gaps in between, just beautiful. And I highly recommend you go check out these paintings in full size and really appreciate the detail. Of course, if you can, in real life, that'll be ideal if you have access to a gallery showing his work um, or to his studio even, just fantastic, fantastic. Look at all these, strong yellows. I got to work on my colors. This this actually uh, pumps me up so much. I can't wait to do that. Here's another beautiful one. This illusion of depth and size and vastness. I love it. And by the way, he has a few videos on Twitter that I need to watch um, of him painting, starting with watercolor. There's barely any pencil, if any. I believe he works in just pure paint, uh, at least in, for some works, because that's what I've seen in the quick snippets of videos I've seen. Here's another one. Look at this blue dominating the scene, a very unique take. 
uh, and the green is very um, reminds me of a perlin green, maybe a mix of thalo green. All of these trees, random details. Again, seeing beyond what is there, what you know is there, and painting it as you see it is an amazing skill. I wonder if that's how he does it. That's how at least I phrase it uh, in my mind. Here's another beautiful one. These blurry gaps between the tree branches and all of these leaves, just genius. Like, how do you paint around so many shapes? Just genius. Uh, here's another one, a bit more unique. So this, I believe, is a, is a bit of an older one, but probably not that old. Uh, but you can see some differences in the color schemes. Maybe it's a different time of the year. Fantastic, fantastic composition. You can place the, the main focal point right in the center. It can actually work all throughout like he did here uh, with the water puddle or whatever that is and, and then have some supporting roll details around it. Just fantastic. And I think this is, or do we have another one after that? But these are a few experiments he did, uh, I believe as a kind of studies for uh, a painting series or a painting. Bottom right one is for sure my favorite. Um, but this really does encourage me to experiment too, you know, to, to try maybe take the same scene and do different takes on it and really try and think outside the box, which is something I feel like I haven't been doing enough of uh, lately. Really thinking outside the box and, and challenging myself to paint differently, completely differently, right? Completely different from what I'm used to, different processes, different everything. Really encouraging. And last one we have is this Willow. I did want to finish with this one because it's very indicative of his style. There's everything I love about it uh, from what I learned, including some uh, lighter uh, marks, which I'm not sure how these were achieved. Uh, I could see it being achieved with a pen or even a colored pencil that's a little open, like white. Um, not really sure how, but there's there are multiple ways of achieving this. Maybe even chalk, uh, kind of a mix, interesting mixed media, or maybe even acrylics. I'm not sure to be honest with you, but I love it. It adds that extra depth. Some of the branches go towards us, which I absolutely love. We have all of these gaps for leaves and details. Uh, a beautiful shape in the middle here, maybe a puddle of water, which is green. It looks great in the context. Just incredible, superb work, high quality picture. So I can actually zoom in even more here on the branches. Look at that. That's crazy, crazy detail. I love it so much. Uh, so yeah, go out there, explore different artists, learn new things and check out David. His work is just amazing. So thank you so much for watching. Let's wrap it up real fast. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I find his works so inspirational, especially that first one. Just something about the light and shadow really inspired me to try and improve not only my like specific skills in one small area, not only color matching, not only getting the values, not only flow, not only technique, everything together to try and bring myself to the next level where my art sings and is it works as one piece of art, right? It's not just a painting with a cool section that looks really good and then another cool section that's kind of okay. And no, it actually all works well together and sings together. I find it highly motivating. I hope you have as well. Not to mention the story of maybe making it a career in a later stage in life after being a civil servant for 27 years. Um, and yeah, this is it. Thank you so, so much. Please, if you can drop a like on this video, it helps it reach more people. And I know a lot of you have been enjoying uh, Painting Masters. Also, if you still aren't, please subscribe to the channel. I am happy to have you on board and I will see you again in the next video real soon.